Lecture number 9 on the series on mechanical measurements. In the past 8 lectures, we have given introduction to the broad area of measurements, touching upon various aspects of measurements like the occurrence of errors, both uh, stati statistical as well as uh, errors which are systematic. We have talked about how to model these statistical errors. We also talked about the outcome experiments in terms of measurable quantities and how to interpret the data in terms of a regression analysis. And then we also talked about design of experiments, both factorial as well as simple type of experiments. The lecture number 9, that is the current lecture, is in fact a beginning as far as the topic of mechanical measurement is concerned. Because here, we are going to discuss in detail the different things we measure and the instruments we use for them, their characteristics and so on and so forth. So, in that sense, the slide shows that we formally we start the study of mechanical measurements at this time. This is also the beginning of module 2, which will in general consider the measurement of field quantities. In fact, we have already explained what field quantities are, a few typical examples are temperature, pressure and so on. Actually, I am going to consider the measurement of various field quantities and uh, they will come in, in the order of their uh, preference as far as I am concerned. But if somebody wants to learn, it is not necessary to start with temperature, you can start anywhere and learn about the various measurements of various field quantities. The first uh, topic I am going to cover is thermometry. It is a very vast subject and uh, what I am trying to do in this set of lectures is to make it very concise and look at the most important aspects of it. And in fact, the science and art of temperature measurement, I deliberately use the science and the art, two terms are used here, is both a science and an art, because art is something which is involved in practice and science is the basic things which are involved in the measurement of temperature, both are important in the case of temperature measurement. So, what I will do is to introduce broadly the idea of uh, temperature and uh, once we identify the basic ideas and discuss the basic ideas, we can go to the specific ideas which are going to be again presented in the form of slides. So, I will go to the board now and uh, try to look at the basic ideas of thermometry. So, what is this thermometry? And what does it mean in terms of the science of thermometry? What is the science involved in this thermometry? So, broadly speaking, what we are talking about when we talk about thermometry is to talk about measurement of temperature. Of course, measurement of temperature is a simple specific task and it may mean the measurement of temperature of a medium at a localized point. It may mean the measurement of temperature at various points at the same time and so on and so forth. It is a very broad definition. Measurement of temperature is very broad and it can encompass different types of situations where temperature is indeed measured. It may be even mapping of the temperature for example, 
nowadays we talk about mapping of temperature by using therm thermography for example it is just like taking a picture picture of temperature field so everything comes under this so it's a very broad thing and uh, even though it is very broad in terms of its uh, application and also the types of situations we come across basic science is simply the same so we will first look at the basic science of uh, thermometry and once when we have once we have understood this very well then we will be able to take up take a look at all sorts of situations where thermometry is practiced or measurement of temperature is practiced so to further clarify let us look at what we mean by temperature the concept comes from thermodynamics where we describe a system for example i will just uh, draw a rectangle or a square here i will call this a system if i want i will call it system a to identify it and differentiate it from another system which may be also under consideration so system a means it is something bounded by in this case i have just drawn the boundary of the system we will call it the boundary and in general different types of interaction can take place between the system and the outside if you want to call it the environment or what is outside the system i have just uh, what i have done is i have separated a certain domain which may contain for example a mass of material it may be a liquid gas or a solid and i am going to focus my attention on this piece of material when i am talking about the thermodynamic properties and the thermodynamic behavior of the system we normally talk in terms of in thermodynamics we talk about equilibrium these concepts are of course clear to you from your course on thermodynamics therefore it will be very briefly discussed here just enough to understand what we are talking about and uh, that's all what i will do so equilibrium of a system a means the following suppose the system a requires some coordinates or some properties which characterize the system let us say i can have x a y a for example two coordinates two coordinates maybe more but i am just taking a very simple system two coordinates characterize the system it will become clear as to why i choose two coordinates here later on <coughs> so if i say that the value of x and y or some particular values that means the system a is completely defined i am able to define describe the system a by using the two coordinates x a and y a for example in the case of a gas which is a pure substance let us assume that it is a pure gas with only one species present x and y may be the pressure and volume so example i will write here gas x a stands for the pressure of the system a and y a may stand for the volume of the volume of the system a <coughs> so the x and y if you are given that means that the state of the system is fixed now what is this equilibrium in order to describe or define equilibrium let me talk in terms of two systems suppose i think in terms of two systems we had just described system a and let me have another system system b 
and uh, for the present we can assume that just like a b is also described by some coordinates for example i can say x b y b are the coordinates for the system b or in other words those are the properties which characterize system b if i bring a contact in contact between system a and system b we can have some kind of interaction if the system a and b are not in equilibrium with each other to start with changes will take place in the properties that means if i had xa ya and xb yb so if i bring them together there will be in general a change in all these quantities in the coordinates in the properties it looks like we haven't said much really all we are saying is that if the two are not in equilibrium with each other then we will observe that x a y a x b y b will keep changing so we can go back now and say that if they are in equilibrium that is if these two are in equilibrium coordinates do not change this is one idea we should keep in mind do not change actually i may have a single system with x a y a in equilibrium with b it can also be in equilibrium with another system c and so on for example i can now say that or in fact if we take system b it may be also in equilibrium with a system c that means that i am going to say that b and c are also in equilibrium that means if i bring them together and allow interaction take place accepting transfer of mass assume that we allow all other interactions take place the interactions possible are in this case we will assume that heat interaction is possible between the two then if b and c are in equilibrium you will again you can make the statement that x b y x b y b x c y c will not change when you bring them into contact with each other that means b and c when you are bring, when you are together they are allowed to interact if the x b y b x c y c do not change that means that these two are equilibrium the proposition we are going to make is that if b and c are in equilibrium with each other and a and b are in equilibrium with each other a and c are also expected to be in equilibrium with each other so this is one important result i am not going to prove i am just going to say this is like an axiomatic development of what we are talking about actually what is the connection between this and what we are going to talk about thermometry imagine system b i will say is a thermometer whatever it may mean right now we don't know but uh, soon we will find out what thermometer means and what is thermometry what is temperature measurement so if b is the thermometer and it is in equilibrium with a and in equilibrium with c then we can infer that something is the same something is common to all of these the thermometer and the a and thermometer and the c and uh, this common thing would correspond to a common temperature we will say they have a common or characterized by common temperature the germ of what we have described now is actually contained in the zeroth law of thermodynamics because the first and second laws came earlier or at least they were enunciated earlier the people had no other go than to call the this as the zeroth law and that is how we are going to call it as the zeroth law thermodynamics and the common what is common between all these things 
is actually the temperature which is common. Actually very interesting to see that we talked about two coordinates x b and y b and uh, let me go back to the slide show. So, in this slide what I have done is uh, remember x b y b we were talking about the two coordinates of that uh, system b which I called as a thermometer or I would like to call it as thermometer. What I have done here is I have shown the performance of that system or the parameters which characterize the system. Suppose the system with the x b and y b as the coordinates is in equilibrium with a system whose coordinates are given some two numbers okay, which means that its temperature is practically fixed. In which case the x 1 and y 1 x 1 here and uh, corresponding y value x 2 I am sorry not x 2 x and y values may have a multiplicity of numbers which will be having the same state that means that they will all be in equilibrium with the system whose temperature is shown as T 1. That means, I have more than one set of values for x and y for the thermometer which will have the same or which will be in equilibrium with the same state and therefore, they are all states they are all uh, possible coordinates for a system having the same temperature. So, I will call this as isotherm and in this case I have shown one isotherm as T equal T 1 the exact numerical value for T 1 is going to come later and what I have done is I have fixed the value of y for the thermometer or y, y b as equal to y subscript 0 y naught. So, when I hold this y equal to y naught there is only one value of x corresponding to the temperature T 1. There is a unique uh, relationship between x and T. So, what does it uh, really mean? Suppose I bring the system with coordinate x b y b which is the thermometer into equilibrium with the different systems at different temperature what I will observe is that one of the coordinates being fixed y being fixed at y naught x will of course, will vary. The change in x is because it is going to change. So, that it will come into equilibrium with the system whose state is now different from the initial state of the thermometer. Therefore, it will change till such a time that it is going to be in equilibrium with the system at T 2 and therefore, x 1 will change to x 2 and similarly, if I bring it into contact with a another reference state with a whose temperature is given as T 3 then x 2 will change to x 3 and so on. Therefore, I will have a unique relationship between x 1 which is shown here x 1, x 2, x 3, x 4 and so on and the isotherms T 1, T 2, T 3, T 4 that is a unique relationship once I fix the value of y equal to y naught or y b equal to y naught then x a will x b will change from x 1, x 2, x 3, x 4 to reflect the change in the state from T 1 to T 2 to T 3 and so on. Now, the question is if I have kept one of the coordinates fixed and I am going to use the other coordinates as a measure of the temperature, I will refer to this x as the thermometric property, x will be thermometric property and for a given value of y which is held fixed, the there is a definite relationship between x and t and that is what we are going to use for the k for the measurement of temperature. So, let me amplify this further and uh, look at some of the possibilities. So, I can construct for thermometers with the different substances or I can make different thermometers using a specific thermometric property which has yes, a direct relationship with the temperature. So, in this case I will label the thermometer using its thermometric property and the symbol which will characterize the thermometric property is the is given in the last column. One of the most important one in this is the constant volume gas thermometer. In fact, the assumption is that we have an ideal gas and uh, we will later come to look at it in more detail. We have an ideal gas at constant volume 
and if the temperature varies, the pressure will also vary. In fact, the pressure and temperature have a direct linear, direct relationship and that is what we are going to use as the thermometric property. So, the pressure is actually measured, it is a measurable quantity and temperature is inferred corresponding to a given pressure. A second type of thermometer I can construct is an electric resistance which is under constant tension or even zero tension. The electrical resistance is the property, thermometric property which systematically will vary with temperature and the symbol is capital R resistance of the element which is a function of the temperature is the thermometric property which is measured electrical resistance is measured by using an electrical circuit in which resistance can be measured. For example, a Wheatstone bridge circuit can be used and once I know the resistance I can find out what is the corresponding temperature by having a definite relationship between R and the temperature. Just like in the case of gas I have a P or the pressure related to the temperature in a direct way. Here R is related to temperature may be linear may not be linear that is not of importance to us. There must be a unique relationship as long as such a relationship is there we can use the resistance as the thermometric property and uh, this is a uh, resistance thermometer. The third one which is also equally important very commonly used in practice by engineers is the thermocouple which uh, generates a thermal electromotive force or electromotive force because of thermal reason. It essentially consists of two wires forming a junction and if the junction temperature is different from a referenced junction temperature we will uh, see it later in more detail the electromotive force which is generated is a measure of the junction temperature. So, E capital E is the electromotive force it is a measure of the temperature because there is a relationship which is direct relationship between E and the temperature. A fourth kind of thermo thermo thermometer is the uses the relationship between the saturation vapor pressure of saturated vapor and the temperature. That means that the boiling point boiling point is pressure dependent there is a direct relationship between pressure, pressure and temperature and this pressure is the vapor pressure and I am going to use measure the vapor pressure because it is a measurable quantity by using a pressure measuring device I can do that just as in the case of a gas at constant volume here also I am going to use the pressure as the measurable property and I am going to relate it to the temperature through a relationship between the pressure and the boiling point or the vapor temperature corresponding to that. If you have a saturated vapor it has got a saturation temperature which is definite relationship with the pressure. These are all things which we can directly understand. The next one is somewhat more difficult to see, but it is easy to see a relationship will exist. We what we want in a thermometer is a definite relationship between a measurable quantity and uh, the temperature that is what is required. So, if I use black body radiation we know that black body radiation is electromagnetic radiation which spans the entire spectrum from 0 to infinity in wavelength or frequency and the emissive power of a black body or a body which is at a temperature equal to T the emissive power has a definite relationship with the temperature. It is given by the Planck's distribution function which is uh, derived from first, for, uh, first principles and uh, therefore, this relationship because it is a direct unequivocal unique relationship between the emissive power of the black body which is in watts per square meter micrometer because I am talking about the spectral emissive power it is a given function of temperature and therefore, this unique temperature emissive power relationship can be used by measuring the emissive power I can find out what is the corresponding temperature. The last one I have shown here is an acoustic thermometer. The speed of sound in, in a medium depends on the temperature. If you have for example, if you have a gas whose composition is known or given fixed fixed composition. So, I fix the composition of the gas and I find out if there is a relationship between the temperature 
and the speed of sound. Speed of sound can be measured by measuring the velocity of propagation of the waves, the pressure pulse, which can be in fact be measured by measuring in principle a length and a time, taking the ratio, I can measure the velocity. And once I measure the velocity, by having a definite relationship between the speed of sound and the temperature, I can infer the temperature. Therefore, you will see from this table and the discussion we had, that in all the cases, there is no effort to measure direct directly is what is called temperature. Temperature is not directly measured. We are measuring something else. In the first case, we measure the pressure of a gas whose volume is held fixed. In the second case, we measure the electrical resistance of a resisting element, resistor element may be made of metal. In the third case, I measure the thermoelectric potential developed in a thermocouple, which is related to temperature. Then I measure the saturation pressure of a saturated vapor and indicated and uh, related to the temperature. In the case of black body, I am measuring the emissive power of a black body at a certain frequency and then relating temperature. And the acoustic thermometer, I am measuring the velocity of sound and I am inferring the temperature. In all the cases, the measured quantity is different from what we want to measure. We want to measure the temperature, but we cannot directly measure. Therefore, it is inferred from a direct definite relationship with the existing between the thermometric property. The last column actually shows the symbol used for thermometric property. The second column shows the thermometric property which we are being which is which is being used and a relationship. Therefore, a relationship exists between what is shown in the second column and the temperature of the thermometer or the temperature at which the thermometer is maintained. Therefore, there is a indirect way of measuring the temperature by looking at some measurable property, which is a definite function of temperature. So, let me just recapitulate a little bit of what we did. So, we consider the box here shown as V, this is the what we consider, I call it the thermometer. And I am going to bring this thermometer in contact with system A, whose temperature I want to measure or system C, whose temperature I want to measure and I look for the value of the thermometric property x v with y v equal to y naught. This is what we did on that slide. I am going to keep y v at y naught. I look for the value of x v and this x v is a function of the temperature and therefore, when I bring into contact with different objects or different systems, if they are at the same temperature, this is not going to change. If I bring this to into contact with this, I allow here interaction to take place, it will show a value of x equal to x v. I do the same thing between b and c. If I obtain the same value of x v in this case also, then I can infer that a and c are at the same temperature. That means that if uh, x v does not change when I do this and this, then the temperature is the same. So, let us uh, look at this with this background let us look at what else we can think in terms of. So, we are talking about I will use the same symbol x v y v here y naught y naught is fixed. This is an indication of the temperature. For temperature I will use the symbol t from now onwards instead of writing temperature every time, I will just say capital T that should mean the temperature. So, what we are saying is x v a definite equal to temperature or x v equal to some function of temperature. The relationship between x v and T can be written in both these forms. And in fact, we are going to use both these forms in the discussion which is going to follow later on. The point is how do we give or assign a number to t? This is the only problem which we have not answered as of now. Assign a particular numerical value, numerical value to t. 
actually it is a question how do we assign a particular value for t. For this let us digress a little bit and look at what has been done by various people. In fact, we have several temperature scales. I am talking now of temperature scales. Maybe my discussion is slightly haphazard in the sense that it is not going the way it probably should go if one wants to be cosmetically clean and neat. What I am trying to do is to go back and forth and introduce ideas so that we understand what we are doing. That is the more important consideration here. I am not very particular about niceties. I want to see whether we can grasp what are the underlying principles. So, the temperature scales actually were there even before thermometry was codified the way we know today. Today we use what is called the international temperature scale 1990 for short we will write it as ITS 90. I am going back in the in time. So, I am going back this is going backwards in time. In fact, there is a IPTS 1968 these are all important dates in thermometry and development thermometry. IPTS is stands for International Practical Temperature Scale 1968. Of course, this uh, practical has been jettisoned. Now, we simply call it the International Temperature Scale 1990. Before that, there was a 1954 before that 1948, 1927 and so on. These are all meetings of like minded people who were inv involved in the measurement of temperature. They wanted to make everything as unique as possible within the means available at the time of those meetings to, to bring uh, some kind of an order to a chaotic system. Earlier if we go back in history even earlier there were many many different scales of temperature which uh, for example, the Fahrenheit then we had the centigrade now of course, we also call it the Celsius and many more. What this scales did was to assign numbers to known reproducible states. Everybody knew what should be done. Only thing was there was no unanimity in assigning the numbers. So, let us look at these reproducible states at least what we can easily immediately recognize. For example, we have the ice point. This is the temperature of ice or melting ice and if we specify that the pressure is exactly equal to one atmospheric pressure, it has got a some definite value. So, ice point is nothing but temperature of melting ice at one atmospheric pressure. It is also called the ice point as I have written here and uh, the next one which is also very familiar to us is called the steam point. which is temperature of boiling water at one atmospheric pressure. So, what centigrade scale did was centigrade scale they said 0 for the ice point and 100 for the steam point. Okay. 
Of course, this assigning these values of 0 and 100 is quite arbitrary, but to be in conformity with historical facts, what we have tried to do or what the modern temperature scales have tried to do is to retain this 100 between the two points. Of course, we do not finally, we say we do not care about it, but uh, it somehow turns out to be 100 divisions between 0 and ice point and the steam point. Okay. So, let me just go back to the previous slide. So, we talked about different Fahrenheit, centigrade, Celsius and so on. These are also common. In fact, Celsius centigrade there is no difference now. They are the same uh, thing. Fahrenheit scale is used only in USA and all other people have decided to or opted to not use it. So, ITS and IPTS these are the international temperature scales what they try to do is they try to define the temperature scale and assign one unique temperature to one particular state which is again reproducible. In fact, earlier on we used to have the ice point as the standard reference. So, this we call which used to be used to be standard reference. point. However, now we use the triple point of water. So, I will give more complete description of triple point of water in one of these slides a little later on. We use the triple point of water as a as a single fixed point for thermometry. It is quite arbitrary. In fact, one can use another well known fixed point as a single fixed point. It is up to one to do that, but in common understanding with uh, people working in this area, we use the triple point of water as a single fixed point for thermometry. and then define the temperature scale such that it agrees with some facts which are known to us. So, that is how you try to do that, but before we do that let me just look at the ideal gas or the constant volume gas thermometer and just briefly talk about what it is constant volume gas thermometer. It is well known that when the pressure is low enough, most gases will behave as ideal gas. That means that P V equal to R T, where P is the pressure, V is the volume, T is the temperature of course, this is the absolute temperature. Later, we will see more about this absolute temperature and this is the constant and uh, in the constant volume gas thermometer, this is held fixed. I am going to hold the volume fixed and therefore, we can say that P is proportional to T or I can refer to I can replace this by P 1 by P 2 is equal to T 1 by T 2. This relationship is behind the use of thermometer thermometry. So, let us uh, rephrase this relationship. So, we are saying that P 1 by P 2 equal to T 1 by T 2 the way I am going to do that is the following. So, I will say that P at any temperature T divided by P at the triple point of water this is equal to T divided by T of the triple point. This is the defining equation. As long as the ideal gas relation is valid, we will see later when it becomes valid and it should be independent of the gas. 
So, this relationship is the background for the temperature scale which we are going to use define and use. So, the ratio of P to P of the gas of fixed volume divided by the pressure of the same gas if it were maintained at exactly equal to the triple point of water which is a reproducible fixed temperature it is give equal to the ratio of the temperatures this is what embodies the use of a constant volume gas thermometer. So, with this background let me go back to the slide show and uh, we'll look at how we are going to construct schematically a constant volume gas thermometer. So, what I have done here is to show schematically it is not a such a simple thing. So, we have a gas which is confined within a rigid vessel it is connected to a U tube manometer which is shown here and there is a scale next to the limb of the manometer and this manometer is in communication with a flexible hose and we have a small reservoir which contains the manometer fluid. So, the use of this is I can rise it up and down this uh, this portion can go up and down. So, let us see what how we are going to use it there is also a mark made here and it is of course, I said it is a rigid vessel therefore, the vessel volume is going to remain fixed and if I confine the gas to within this volume given by this mark on the tube here that means, the volume of the gas is held fixed that means, that the constant volume gas thermometer means the volume is held fixed as I just mentioned and uh, let us suppose that the gas containing vessel here is in contact or is surrounded by a medium whose temperature is fixed at a particular value. So, if it is exposed to this temperature if I hold the volume of the gas constant how do I hold the gas volume constant I have to move up and down the manometer such that at the particular pressure pressure the temperature of the constant temperature environment the gas pressure takes on such a value that the volume is brought to this value then the pressure will change that means that the this limb is going to move up and down in tune with the variation of the temperature of the gas inside the rigid vessel. And in fact I am going to put a scale right here and measure the pressure difference between here this uh, meniscus here and the meniscus here that is the pressure of the gas. So, the thing is not as simple as that I will see we will see why it is so. Suppose, I take a gas A in fact, I have shown three gases it could be any number of gases gas A I have taken and I have initially the temperature at the triple point of water water that means, that when the gas is exposed to an environment at the triple point of water the value of the pressure ratio P steam point to P triple point in this case I am taking the steam point to triple point of water ratio is coming out some value here. And what I do is I systematically reduce the pressure corresponding to the pressure at the triple point and then note down what is the ratio of the pressure at the steam point to the triple point of water. So, if I I cannot of course, do it at a triple point of water pressure uh, uh, equal to 0 I can only do it to some pressure low enough and then I will extrapolate. So, I am going to extrapolate this curve and this is going to hit the axis here this is the intercept this intercept has some value let us say. Suppose, I do the same experiment with a different gas and again I do that it also goes through the same point and if I take a gas C it same thing is observed that means, as the pressure at the beginning and when the volume of the gas is at the triple point of water is, is reduced systematically a stage will reach when all gases will behave in a 
ideal way and that the ratio is unique. In this case, the temperature, the pressure ratio between the steam point and the triple point is given by the value which is shown in this slide P steam point divided by P triple point of water for all gases is 1.366049, which is a unique number. This will happen as P T P tends to 0, but not equal to 0, but tending to 0. We cannot have equal to 0 because then there is no gas inside. Now, just to remember what we did before we came to the slide, instead of P steam point B by divided by P triple point, I can have P at some temperature divided by P triple point that will also have a unique number corresponding to any particular temperature also there will be a unique number which will be independent of the gas and therefore, I can use the gas thermometer actually to define this temperature scale. It defines the temperature scale in terms of ratios and this is what we did on the board. So, with this background we can see that the temperature scale is uniquely defined because there is a ratio P divided by P triple point as P triple point tends to 0 it is unique and a unique function of temperature. There are some uh, practical issues like whether the gas will remain uh, a gas at a low enough temperature and so on those we need not worry right now. Just to recapitulate we have a single fixed point of thermometry or the primary fixed point which is called the triple point of water with a highly reproducible result and uh, at the triple point of water the solid water that is ice liquid water and vapor that is steam all of them coexist in equilibrium and the triple point of water given by exactly equal to 0 0.01 degree Celsius equal to 273.16 Kelvin and the corresponding pressure of the in the inside the triple point cell is a 4.58 millimeters of mercury or 610.65 Pascals. This is just to describe the triple point cell. So, let me go back to the board and uh, digress a little bit and describe something. So, what we are going to do is we are going to define the temperature scale using the result shown here P divided by P T P. So, let me just rewrite this slightly by indicating that the value is limit P T P tending to 0. Limit P T P tending to 0 P by P T P equal to T by T P this is the defining equation or this is called the gas temperature scale. This is called the gas temperature scale. <coughs> In order to give numerical values, I must construct or I must have like we had the triple point of water which was the primary fixed point. I can also look for other secondary fixed points. Why do we require the secondary fixed point? Let me just briefly explain. We are going to think in terms of secondary fixed points. The reason why we have to do that is explained briefly by noting that the temperatures of interest to us range is from 0 0.01 degree Kelvin to about 100,000 Kelvin. Let us just say that this is our range. I want to measure temperature from this value low value to a very high value. The point is one single thermometer one single thermometer cannot cover this entire range. This entire range I cannot cover with a single thermometer. Therefore, I can achieve the measurement of temperature in this range with a multiplicity of 
multiplicity of thermometers probably covering different ranges that is the important thing to recognize. I can measure or I can cover this range not with a single thermometer, but I may have to use different thermometers. That means, I cannot use the I cannot calibrate by using one single calibration, but I need to calibrate each one of these thermometers by making sure that they are all going to indicate the same temperature wherever there is an overlap between two thermo thermometer ranges. So, let me just uh, explain it a slightly more figuratively. Suppose, I have this is just a scale of temperature. So, let me say that thermometer 1 covers that range. Let me say that thermometer 2 corresponds to covers this range, then I will have a thermometer 3 covering this range and so on. So, this is thermometer number 1, number 2, number 3 and so on. There is a certain overlap, there is another overlap here, these are overlap. Suppose, I have the, the, the let us for the moment assume the thermometer number 1 is the constant volume gas thermometer. I am able to use it up to this particular value for some reason I am not able to go beyond that. Then I have let us say thermocouple or a resistant thermometer which can go from here to this place by that time of course, the, the material will uh, melt or the, the, the resistance the thermometer may become useless, it may not have a definite it, it may become uh, useless at that temperature. So, we are going to now have two thermometers thermometer 1 and thermometer 2 both of which are going to be useful in this range both T H 1 T H 2. So, what I must do is within this gap or overlap where both the thermometers can be used I should find some fixed points or I should find some definite temperatures which can be used to calibrate one against the other. So, we use secondary fixed points in the overlap region to calibrate T H 2 with respect to T H 1. What is this calibration? It means simply that at a particular temperature indicated by thermometer 1 for which I am going to give a certain number, the same number must be assigned for the temperature indicated by thermometer 2. That means that thermometer 1 and thermometer 2 are going to be in agreement with each other in this overlap region. And now, by extrapolation I am going to assume that because they are calibrated in this region and I have found a certain relationship between temperature and the thermometric property, I am going to extrapolate it here in this region. This is the region of extrapolation. So, we will call it the extrapolation region. In this extrapolate region, I have another thermometer 3 which has got some amount of inter overlap and therefore, I will calibrate thermometer 3 with respect to thermometer 2 using some secondary fixed points in this region and therefore, if I continue this argument in principle, I will be able to cover the entire region of temperature from 0 0.01 to 100,000. The idea is to look for secondary fixed points, look for different thermometers which can be used over different ranges and everything must give you give us some unique temperature scale which is in agreement which uh, everybody agrees and therefore what we are going to do in the next lecture is to look at how this exercise is done 
and ITS 90 is a is the result of such deliberation using different thermometers using different techniques spanning the entire region and coming to having some definite fixed points which are reproducible with great precision and then looking for interpolating functions for different thermometers in different ranges and then completely covering the entire range of temperature from the lowest to the highest which is measured in the laboratory. So, we will take it up in the next uh, lecture and of course, we will continue after that we will continue with the description of different thermometers and their characteristics and so on. This uh, idea about thermometry culminating in a temperature scale of ITS 90 is a very important background and prelude to the understanding of different thermometers and their characteristics. Thank you.